From Morelli Field at Melrose High School in Melrose, Mass., this is MIAA Baseball here on LSP. Tonight, it's the Somerville Highlanders with a record of 2-0 taking on the Medford Mustangs in this Greater Boston League rivalry matchup. Good evening, everybody. Sam Feely here with you, ready to bring you the play-by-play -play story. The uh, Highlanders 2-0 and coming off uh, kind of a wild win over Lynn English last time out. We're tied uh, eight eight at, after uh, seven innings of regulation, and then scored seven in the top of the eighth. First inning of extra innings to come away with that that uh, <laughs> much more lopsided win than uh, the game actually played out as. Very elaborate way of saying uh, closer uh, than the final score indicated. I guess you know one one big inning can often des decide. Baseball games, not often that. It's a seven-run inning in extras after it was 8-8 eight, eight in regulation. Uh, Medford, however, officially 0-0. Their season opener against Revere also went into extra innings but was suspended in the eighth, tied at three. So uh, with a little bit of drizzle in the forecast right now, we'll see if Razio Azzarello's squad can get a whole game in here tonight uh, on uh, the beautiful surface of Morelli Field, home to obviously the uh, Melrose Red Raiders, the Intercity League Championship Series, and other, uh, and other uh, baseball events throughout the year. It's a great facility here at the corner of Lynn Fells and Tremont. The Mustangs are in white. The Highlanders are in red. Let's give you the starting lineup for the visiting Somerville Highlanders. It'll be Rob Larkin leading it off in center field, but, uh, followed by Ian Bourne getting the start on the mound for Somerville. Then will be Tucker Cali at third, Preston Artolino at short, Colin Bourne at first, Max Barish in left, Graham Ross behind the plate, Noah Brown is in right, and Tommy Griffin rounds out the lineup at second. They will be opposed by John Wright, the starting pitcher for the Medford Mustangs. And this is the Mustangs batting order. It'll be Mike Piccolo leading it off in center field, followed by Karsten Mangan in left. Jack Lombardo is in right. Justin Marino is at first. Travers Moody is at third. Joe DeRazio is behind the plate. Alex Giogas is at second. And Derek Marino rounds out the line. He's the DH uh, right is not in the batting order for this game. It's 53 degrees overcast already starting to drizzle a little bit and again hopefully we can get the uh, game in in its entirety I'm sure the Mustangs feel that way especially with the way the uh, first game of the season had to be suspended and that'll have to be resumed the next time they face Revere later in the season so here comes Rob Larkin to lead things off for Somerville you can see him on the right side of the screen the red jersey says uh, red jersey is uh, John Rice finishing up his warm-up tosses uh, thanks so much to Razio Azzarello for uh, having me in to uh, live stream this game and hopefully some more games as the season progresses for the Medford Mustangs. Roz and I, of course, know each other a uh, uh, long time uh, work in the Intercity League, myself with the Blue Sox and him with the uh, Medford and then Melrose Americans. And uh, hopefully more to come uh, this spring and this summer when the ICL season rolls around. So, again, Rob Larkin leading things off. Hey, fancy new score bug, and I already screwed up by uh, having Paul one strike one and out, out one already up there. But uh, here is Larkin to lead things off, the center fielder for S Somerville. 732, first pitch under, uh, coming up here from John Wright. Here it is. It is up and away for ball one. We are underway. Hey, look, the ball 
strike it out dots do that now honestly it is very in the grand scheme of things actually quite simple stuff from uh, uh to do an obs but uh got a lot of a lot of that i've been working on this is the last time i might have seen some of you folks i'm not even talking about the uh, mass bay basketball fans 2-0 the count. This will be fouled off by uh, Rob Larkin for strike one. Larkin, Ian Bourne, and Tucker Cowley do up here in the top of the first for Somerville. Uh, in the event that uh, we have a connection issue on my hotspot, I am recording the game, and we'll make sure it is uploaded in its entirety tonight or tomorrow morning or whenever it fits into my copious free time. Two and two the count now on the last pitch called strike from right to Larkin. Two, two. That's smacked to second base. It'll be picked up by Geogis. But you know the issue there at second for Geogis and Larkin will reach. So Runner on to begin the ball game for Somerville. And here's Ian Bourne, the starting pitcher for Somerville, who takes down away for ball one. see if Islanders can make the Mustangs pay for that issue at second to uh, begin the ball game. It's fouled off onto Tremont Street. We have an official broadcast. Now the first foul ball onto uh, the street down the third baseline. Was it an unofficial broadcast during uh, Larkin's? I don't know if it got onto Tremont, but pretty close there. Runner goes from first, pitches a called strike, throw down to second, pulled towards the left field side of the bag and in safely with a stolen base is Larkin. So it'll be one and two, but with a runner in scoring position now for Somerville. And a chance for Bourne to help his own cause here before he even has to throw a pitch. One, two. Down and in for ball two to even the count. Of course, the big baseball story here in the Boston area today doesn't even concern a Massachusetts team. Jackson Holiday, the number one prospect in baseball, making his major league debut tonight against the Red Sox over at Fenway. That's swung on and missed by Bourne for out number one. So, still runner at second, and now one down for the third baseman for the Highlanders, Tucker Cowley. First right-handed batter that the righty right has had to face. I got through that without mangling my words. 0-1-1. Oh Off-speed pitch on the outside corner there. Like to drop a message of support for anyone, for any player or team in the chat. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. I don't know if the uh, YouTube subscribe button is supposed to sparkle when I say that, but point is, uh, subscribe chat is subscribers only, uh, mainly to keep uh, spam bots out of the chat. Um, but once you're subscribed for five minutes, uh, tell the Mustangs or the Highlanders how much you love them. Other ways you can support on our coverage and content down the line. We'll get to those as the broadcast progresses. Right now it's 0-2 to Cali. That'll be high for ball one. One and two is the count to the Highlanders third baseman with the cleanup hitter, Preston Artolino, due up next. Larkin reach to begin the ball game. You don't want that to go to waste. You're Somerville. Want to keep your hot streak to begin the season rolling. Already 2-0. Want to make it three in a row to start the season. That one is 
fouled off. It'll be, it'll remain rather, one and two to Cali. Don't forget to quote in our traditional who you got, Paul, uh, Medford or Somerville, and a swing and a miss. Drop third strike. Throw will go down to first to complete the strikeout, but advancing to third on the play is Larkin. So back-to-back -back K's for right, and he's one out away from getting out of this, but the first run of the game is 90 feet away now for the Highlanders, and here's the shortstop, the cleanup hitter, Preston Artolino. Another right-hander, and that'll be outside for ball one. Gonna, uh, don't forget to vote in our who you got poll. Let's see uh, how many Somerville fans, how many Medford fans we got in the chat. Two and oh, the count now. That's down and away. Has no bearing on the outcome of the game, I promise you. Or an outcome on anything, I promise you. But we'll see who's repping whomst. Watching this game between the long time rivals, Somerville and Medford. Swing and a miss. Cardolino well behind that one. Two and one. And Roz coming out here. Well, not so much of a swing and a miss. It looked like he got a piece of Durazio behind the play. Athletic trainer also coming out in tow behind Roz here to see uh, if uh, Joel will be good to continue. Well, sometimes these things can uh, you know, look worse than they are. Just. Sometimes you need a little wake-up call when you got this late of a start out of school night. April vacation isn't until next week, folks. Got to get the snap score up, huh? This is a family show. <laughs> Anthony's, uh, Anthony's our PA announcer tonight. Just taking a snap. I'm uh, taking a selfie for Snapchat, and I just look like, I just look, I have the most befuddled look on my face. I just know it. I was too far away to really tell. So anyways, two and one the count now to Artelino. That's on the outside corner, two and two to Preston. We can keep the line going with Colin Bourne due up next, the first baseman for Somerville. Right comes set, and the 2-2. Grounder to the left side, but foul. And do it again at 2-2. Two and two. Larkin reaching to begin the ball game. Stole second, got to third. And a drop third strike for Cali. Called strike three. Ardolino rung up. And after Larkin reaches three Ks in a row for John Wright, and all is right in the top of the first as far as Medford is concerned. We are through half an inning. Somerville nothing. Medford coming up. Advertising opportunities are available on LSP. Sponsor our content for as little as $25 a spot, whether you want to promote a business product or event or send a message of support to a player, team, or coach. All right, getting towards the end of the school year, so think of it like a yearbook in that regard or a team program or whatever. Email yours truly, samfeelypbp at gmail.com for all the deets.
Good crowd filing in here for uh, this traditional rivalry game, Somerville and Medford. It'll be Mike Piccolo, Carson Mangan, and Jack Lombardo to lead things off for Medford here in the bottom of the first. Here is Piccolo, the center fielder. Born throwing lefty, just like he bats lefty. As that is on the outside corner for strike one. You can tell it's cold because umpire has already uh, broken out the uh, gloves. He's, and, and it's actually got the got uh, day glow gloves on too to make sure that uh, uh, the players can see you know, especially his fingers is going to hold up, you know, ball, one ball, one strike, et cetera. We're going to see the fist there for the strike call in the outside corner, 0-2. Oh so as I was saying, uh, Bourne, uh, thrown lefty and also batting lefty. Oftentimes, left-handed pitchers do everything else right-handed. Like, throwing is the only thing they do left-handed. Randy Johnson is a famous example. Clayton Kershaw also bats right-handed. Madison Bumgarner, of course. But good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Mike Piccolo, three strikes, and you're out for the first out of the bottom of the first here. Now here's the lefty, uh, the left fielder, rather, right-handed batting, Karsten Mangan. That's a common occurrence for pitchers. Not very common for hitters to bat right-handed and throw left-handed. Swing and a miss, strike one to Mangan, the left fielder for the Mustangs. Ricky Henderson is the only batter in MLB history since 1900 with at least 5,000 plate appearances who batted righty and threw lefty. And will be up and away for the first ball of the night for Piccolo. And a handful of other quality players, uh, over the years who, position players that is, who uh, threw uh, lefty and batted righty. Cody Ross and Ryan Ludwig come to mind, but not all, but again, Henderson's the only one since 1900 to have at least 5,000 plate appearances and that'd be his profile. Two and one now to Mangan from Bourne. Oftentimes, for natural righties, it's the other way around. They learn, they teach themselves to bat left-handed. I'm sure I've told you folks the story of that, how that applied to uh, Ichiro Suzuki specifically, so he could be two steps closer to the batter's box. You want to follow up, follow that up with? You know, imagine if Ricky Henderson could also bat lefty. He probably, he'd probably be up to 2,000 stolen bases in his career. Oh well, only have to settle for 1,406. <laughs> One of those absurd, unbreakable baseball records. Two and two to Mangan with Lombardo two up next. If anybody gets on the shortstop, Justin Marino. No, just barely able to make contact with that one. Leighton off the end of the bat, but Carson stays alive. Bourne comes set the pitch. Outside, full count. Strike out the leadoff guy on three pitches and you get ahead of next guy 0-1. You think you're gonna cruise for the top half of the, you know, the first inning of work, but Mangan's making him earn it here. Slap the other way to the right side. Took the first baseman well off the bag and he still got him. 3-1 is how that play is scored. Mangan, not quick enough, and just too quick a reaction there by Bourne to get over to the bag, which is especially challenging as the lefty falling off towards third base on your follow-through. And to get back to first base and still get Mangan there. So two up, two down for Jack Lombardo. 
and Lombardo will take strike one on the outside corner. And even if it doesn't really start, well, it is definitely precipitating right now. And even if it wasn't, it's dew. We're pretty close. We're close enough to the dew point right now that the condensation is evident on the bleachers here at Morelli, but it is definitely starting to come down a bit more here, something we were hoping to avoid uh, tonight, but the forecast does not look good the next couple of days either. I think you, you're you okay to close that window. The, the concern is me just not having, to, not having to shoot through, you know, the closed glass on my side. <laughs> Sorry, Anthony. I I'm uh, I I don't know if we should mess with the with the heater back here, but Roz told me they fixed it uh, in the off season. Anyways, well, I'll, we'll we'll deal with that later. Wind snag at third, fired a first in time. What a play by Tucker Cali. One in the books, no score. When I say LSP has something for everyone since 2011, I by God mean it. Sports, live events, pet sitting, and walking, tech help, errands, and more. Find all the information on our services at Thumbtack or through our Linktree profile. Linktree, I don't know how to pronounce domain hacks like that, slash LSP37 or email yours truly, samfeelypbp at gmail.com. So we can proceed to give you what you need. <laughs> Now up at bat, number 24, Matt. Number 22, Colin Bourne. Colin Bourne will lead things off here on the top of the second to be followed by Max Barish and Graham Ross. Strike one taken by the Islanders' first baseman. And a nice feed to his brother Ian for the second out of the bottom of the first. Checks his swing, and it was enough of a swing to rule that strike two, and it is 0-2 to Colin. At the top of the zone for strike three, bent that one over the inside part of the plate, and good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Colin Bourne. Four consecutive strikeouts now since the leadoff reach and stolen base by Larkin for John Wright. One up, one down here in the top of the second. Here is Max Barish, the left fielder. First lefty in a while here in the Highlanders lineup, and he takes strike one. Came close to hitting him there, but it's just a ball, and it's one and one. No base runners yet for Medford. Larkin, the lone base runner so far for Somerville. You get confirmation that was a hit or an error uh, on the uh, for Larkin that allowed him to reach. It would have been an E4 if it was an error. I need to I don't know if Roz is going to be looking at his phone for text messages during the game, but... Nothing ventured, nothing, nothing gained, right? Oh, 
Now from the hot corner to a snag at first base on the opposite end for Rocco Pucci. Fine plays at the corners for each side. So far, two up, two down now. First non-strikeout out for Somerville. Put the ball in play, good things happen for somebody. <laughs> a little nubber off the handle of the bat for Graham Ross, but it'll be an out anyways. And three up, three down for John Wright here in the top of the second against the Somerville Highlanders. We're through a buck and a half, still no score. The LSP store is open. Get yourself a DVD or digital copy of most past LSP video broadcasts or one of several different designs of stickers, shirts, or other merch, including some stuff with my dog, Tina the Long Arena, on it, or some words I've probably said on the, this year YouTube channel over the years. LSP37.creator-spring.com, a place to order for merch. Email yours truly, samfeelypvp at gmail.com for game videos. <laughs> Now at bat, number 10, Justin Marino. We'll go to the bottom of the second, and it'll be Justin Marino, Rocco Pucci, and Travers Moody do up for the Mustangs. Marino, the shortstop, cleanup hitter for Medford. Six in a row retired by John Wright after Larkin reached to start the game for Somerville. And a breaking ball from Ian Bourne drops in there for strike one. Again, Somerville 2-0 entering play in Medford. 0-0 and to be determined uh, pending uh, the, re the resumption of their suspended game against Revere last time out, which was 3-3 in the eighth inning. Last thing we want is to suspend this game. I mean, I, I'm, I mean I'm sure that's what Medford would hate. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was just gonna say. I was gonna say the score was the uh, was off. They had uh, three runs already for uh, uh, for Medford. That unfortunately is not the case. That's three strikes. Uh, and you're out for Justin Marino. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. So that's the second straight leadoff three pitch strikeout for Ian Bourne. Now let's see if Rocco Pucci can fare any better. Pucci with a fine defensive play in the top half this inning. See if he can get the Mustangs their first base runner. And he'll just foul this one off. Hey, make contact. That's all you can do sometimes, right? Four Ks already for Wright. Two so far for Bourne. So this game at 732 when it was 52 degrees and overcast. But as the sun has set, we've, the weather's cooled off, the rain has picked up. That'll be a pretty routine 
Ground out to a short there off the bat of Pucci as Artelino makes the play. Two up, two down for the third baseman, Travers Moody. Don't forget to uh, vote in our Who You Got poll, and don't forget to subscribe to this year YouTube channel. Remember, our chats are subscribers only, so as to keep out the uh, bad actors and the spam bots. Nobody wants to see that. But, uh, it's free to subscribe. You see the membership stuff that is paid but also optional, but gets you some sweet benefits. And find out more about those uh, on the membership page. Well, I do need to update some of the stuff there, to be fair. So again, it's completely optional. Memberships are optional. Subscribing is free and, of course, gets you alerts to when we go live and when we schedule our future broadcasts. 2-0 the count here to Travers Moody, an unfamiliar position really for any batter in this game, not just a Mustang, but there is strike one, two and one. Knowing that knowing uh, Bourne has not exactly been all over the place tonight, Get ahead 2 and 0. Wouldn't be surprised to see Moody have the green light there, but clearly he didn't like it out of the hand and let it go. Now he fouls this one off on a Lynn Fells, and it is 2 and 2. Catcher Joe DeRazio is on deck. He had the cobwebs knocked around earlier off a foul ball in this game, but he it's good to stay in. And here he is in the. Uh, on deck circle. Van Hill have to wait his turn. That's a check swing, but a full swing in the eyes of the umpire. And three Ks now for Ian Bourne. They're through two complete and still no score between Somerville and Medford. To keep playing. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. Two old fastball and he swings like that. Two old fastball and he. He swung and hit the catcher in the head. Then he took a hang, huh? Are you down with the sound called LSP? Then follow and support us on the web. Linktree, Facebook, YouTube, PayPal, Creator Spring, LSP37. We're also on Thumbtack. And we also sell Magic the Gathering cards on TCG Player, if you're into that sort of thing. Just got confirmation from Roz. It was, in fact, an E4 that allowed Rob Larkin to reach to begin the ball game. So neither pitcher has allowed a hit. Yeah, that, number 53, Noah Brown. First two innings, and I realize I just you all are just getting my stupid in stereo there with the uh, uh, camera mic also live at the same time. I am doing this all by myself, mind you, folks. Swing and a miss, strike one to Noah Brown. Uh, fouling off looks like or slipped out of Rosio's glove somehow. It will be Brown, Griffin, and Larkin due up here in the top of the third as that's down the right field line the other way. And that is a foul ball by mere inches. Brown off the end of the bat in a no man's land into the corner, but just ever so slightly late and just that close to having our first base hit of the ball game and probably for extra bases too. Alas, the count is 0-2 to Noah. Oh, well, only one way to get, uh, get on base uh, and plunked in the Small of the back after almost going the opposite way for a leadoff double, but it's one and two. 
Now, after all that, much ado about nothing. Noah Brown goes down on strike swinging. Five Ks already for John Wright. One up, one down here on the top of the third. Here's Tommy Griffin, the number nine hitter and the second baseman for the Highlanders. And the right-handed batter, and Griffin will take strike one. The off man, Rob Larkin, the only base runner in this game for either side, and got there on an E4 at that to lead off the ball game, is due up next. Griffin behind 0-2. Oh Oftentimes, well, it does look like the rain's tapered off a little bit, but on a moist night like tonight, often you have to worry about the pitchers maybe not being able to get a firm grip on the ball. However, good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Tommy Griffin, strikeout number six now for John Wright. Two up, two down, and we turn over the lineup for Rob Larkin. Reached on an E4 to begin the ball game, stole second, but then was stranded at third. No batting gloves for Rob right now. Full strategy, Cotton. McCall on a raw night like this. Whew, up and away. Looked like the right call, but spot that spot's pretty close to where we've seen some called strikes tonight anyways. One and one. Fouled off. One and two. Larkin, the only base runner for either side so far in this ball game. And uh, despite the precipitation, a uh, good pace this game, obviously. Skied into center field. Back goes Piccolo over to his right and hauls it in. And a little bit of drama at the end of that play, too. Just trying to go all the way down to his angles to make sure that he held on to that one, but nine in a row retired since Larkin reached to begin the ball game, and we are still scoreless through two and a half. Advertising opportunities are available on LSP. Sponsor our content for as little as $25 a spot, whether you want to promote a business, product, or event, or send a message of support to a player, team, or coach. Email yours truly, sanfeelypbp at gmail.com for all the deets. <laughs> To those of you watching on YouTube, uh, Anthony, our PA announcer, wants to know how many people are in the chat, and really nobody's engaging right now, so if you all could do Anthony a big favor and subscribe, and then uh, say, say hi to Anthony and tell him how awesome he is, that'd be great, thanks. <laughs> you can tell me how awesome I am too, you know. <laughs> Here's Joe DeRazio to lead things off in the bottom of the third for Medford. He takes outside ball one. That is a rare occurrence uh, out of the hand of one Ian Bourne tonight. First pitch ball. Let off each of the first two innings with three pitch strikeouts. Swing and a miss by DeRazio. One and one. DeRazio, Giogas, and Derek Marino 
Picked you up here in the bottom third of the Medford order in the bottom of the third. Nine in a row retired by Medford starter John Wright after Rob Larkin reached. Did that hit him is the question. Well, we talk about, you know, the ball being slippery and maybe affecting the uh, pitcher's control. That's one of the, the, I think it's the, really the first time one has really gotten away from Ian tonight. It was just a ball, didn't hit him, and it is two and one. So obviously, the flip side that cancels that out, how it may affect the pitchers, is that the ball won't carry nearly as much off the bats of the hitters. But that runs inside, three and one now to Durazio as you know Larkin reach on an error. Medford looking for their first base runner themselves here. Six in a row retired to start the game by Ian Bourne. Folks, if I could control the outcome of this game with what I say up here, they're not paying me nearly enough. Lead off walk for Joe Durazio. The announcer is in no way responsible for any walks issued. But anyways, Durazio reaches, and here is Giogas. Second baseman, and we'll see if... Uh, Bunt may be on here. Giogas does square, pulls back, and it is ball one. First base run of the game for Medford on a leadoff walk by Durazio on five pitches. As I make the comment about, you know, maybe the ball slipping a bit for Ian Bourne, remember what I said. Precipitation has seemed to taper off a bit now here in Melrose. Another square, and that's just going to be a foul ball. You get that in front of the plate. That is a perfectly deadened bunt for Giogas, but it trickled foul. One and one. I mean, everybody in Middlesex County knows what the play is here, and Tucker Cowley is way in from third right now. Up and away for ball two. Gonna give a fastball up and away there. Hoping that the batter will commit before they can pull back and get strike two. And then obviously the bunt would be off. That ran inside and it is three and one. Still think the bunt's going to be on here. Geogus. Moreno's due up next. Number nine here in the DH. He is running, and Geogus is swinging and fouling that, fouling that one straight to the backstop, and the count will be full. So, changing the tack there for the Mustangs, but. Uh, now two strikes. Jokes is definitely swinging. Let's see. Have yeah, the hit and run in mind again. Runner does not go, and it's on the outside corner for strike three called. Well, Jokes was ready to pitch the bat towards the dugout. He got the bad news there, and that is strikeout number four in the first called third strike for Ian Bourne. Here's the number nine hitter of the DH, Derek Marino. Oh, they tried to pick him off at first and it got away from the first baseman and second base all to Joe Durazio there. Runner in scoring position now with one out. Game like this, figure it's going to be low scoring. This could be a pivotal moment. This at bat, or at least this half inning as a whole here. It is 1-0 and oh the count. That last pitch missed inside. So you got Durazio in scoring position after drawing the leadoff walk. 
and then getting to second on E3 on a failed pick uh, E1 rather a failed pickoff and Bourne misses again and now Matt O'Donnell's going to go out to the mound and have a word with his starter here while that's going on Ozzy Ogaro going to have a word with Derek Marino and uh, I'm sure that uh, Bourne is not hurt or anything it's uh as uh, you know, pitching injuries have gotten more and more of their share of the uh, baseball discourse recently. What isn't there to talk about in base in major, in major league baseball right now that isn't you know absolute calamity, huh? But uh, two and one now the counts that's fouled off by Marino. Fastball, said, let her rip, and Marino found it straight back. Uh, but, yeah, a um, lot to talk about, especially at the major league level. Um, not a lot of it good, obviously, in the uniforms and the Oakland A's situation. And pitching injuries, swing and a miss by Marino, 2-2, two and two, and O'Donnell's visit seemed to be pretty well-timed, at least so far. So one more strike to get, though, out of Marino. But, uh you wonder, you know, in, in people talk about, you know, oh, pitchers don't go nearly as long as they did, even in the days like, you know, Pedro Martinez and Roger Clemens in the era I grew up in, grew up watching baseball. And I can uh, already feel the uh, AARP newsletter subscriptions uh, coming in uh, as I say that. Bones turn to dust, baby. But, uh, but, yeah, I mean, now you understand why. As that goes down and in, nearly hit Marino, three and two. Durazio holds at second with the leadoff man, Mike Piccolo, due up next. You know, I, figure out, I, I guess you got to figure out you know, where, like, like what, I mean, we know what changed. These pitchers throw so much harder than they did 20 years ago at a younger age. But ball four, second walk of the inning. Issued by Bourne. I wonder, you know, what has to change in order to uh, reduce those injuries without, you know, taking anything away from the pitcher's strategies or, their, or the game itself. Of course, I just think it's unreasonable to expect pitchers to have to throw 100 miles an hour in order to be major league caliber. One and zero to Mike Piccolo, who struck out swinging his first time up in the first, and he's just going to do the Statue of Liberty play there and watch strike one get in there. One and one. So Durazio at second and Marino at first, with one out here in the bottom of the third, no score, and a swing and a miss by Piccolo, and his one and two. As long as we're talking about, you know, Ichiro and Ricky Henderson, very, very short, quick stroke there. I'm going to slap the ball through the gap on the right side. And a balk was called on Ian Bourne. Do not do a balk, please. But that takes the double play out of the equation. Puts two runners in scoring position. One and two now to Piccolo. Infield will, well, the corner infielders anyways, will come in here. And a swing and a miss for strike three. Well, the workload in this inning has been much higher for Bourne, but he has responded nicely. He is now up to five strikeouts. And here is Karsten Mangan to try and cash in for the Mustangs with two outs and two runners in scoring position. Mangan grounded out. And he won his first time up, and that one was coming in hot on his hands. He swung at it anyways for strike one. 
walk just made Bourne angry, it seems. So again, Durazio now at third, Marino at second. See, that's down and away for ball one. A balk committed by Ian Bourne after walking Durazio to lead off the inning and then walking Marino two batters later. One and one the count now to Mangan with strikeouts to Giogas and Piccolo in between. Two and one. Every out that Bourne has got to this inning has been a strikeout or a ground out. Only one ball's left the infield tonight, and that was the fly out by Larkin and the top half this inning. Three and one. Noah Brown nearly led off the top. Was it Brown or is it uh, Colin Brown? We all let off the uh, top of the third, uh, top top of the inning, uh, the third of the second. Nearly had a double the opposite way down the uh, right field line in the corner, but just went foul by inches. He ended up striking out. And, uh, three and one here to Karsten. Oh, beautiful breaking ball. Oh, that's only strike two. Yeah, home, home plate umpire realizes there he rung him up, but that was, in fact, only strike two, and we play on. You can see coming down the third base line here is DeRazio trying to induce maybe another balk to try and get the first run of the game somehow. So that's a full count, and that'll be down and in, and the bases are loaded. So, base is loaded, two out, three walks, and a balk in this inning for Ian Bourne. I don't have the, I'm not getting the pitch count tonight, but pretty sure he's, I, I would not be shocked if he's thrown more pitches in this inning than the first two combined. Got to be the case, I have to figure. Here's Jack Lombardo. Swing and a miss and a pitch at his eyes. And also in the lefty batter's box. 1-0. and Now that curveball has done some wonders for Bourne tonight, but that stayed outside. That'll be one and one. Durazio at third, Marino at second, Mangan at first. Grounder to the left side, but it'll be foul and it'll be strike two. This is a an especially heavy workload for Ian Bourne considering He's due up first in the top half of the next inning, the fourth inning. Can he get out of this unscathed? Or is Medford going to take the lead here? Come set. One, two. Foul tip into the mitt of the catcher, Ross, for strike three, and that will do it for the bottom of the third. Meffa gets its first three base runners. Their first hit, their first run. We'll have to wait. No score after three. No, he looks like um, John. Huh? John. Huh? John. Huh? John. 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 John.
When I say LSP has something for everyone since 2011, I by God mean it. Sports, live events, pet sitting and walking, tech help, errands, and much, much more. Get all the details on our services on our Thumbtack page. You can find through Linktree LLSP37 or by emailing yours truly, sampheelypbp at gmail.com so we can proceed to give you what you need. Now at bat, number 23, Ian Bourne. Come on, Ian. Come on, guys, let's get going now. Ian Bourne to lead things off after that heavy duty bottom of the third. Both pitchers with six strikeouts and no hits allowed through three innings. Bourne will take outside for ball one. Only one base runner allowed so far by John Wright. That was Rob Larkin reaching on an error to lead off the ball game. And he stole second and was stranded third. But he's retired nine in a row since. Swing and a miss for strike one to Bourne, who retired the first six in order. And, of course, had that uh, difficult bond the third. Allowed three walks and committed a balk. It was an er and also committed an error in the midst of that. And he sends this one deep to right field. Back goes Lombardo. It's off the base of the wall. And Bourne with the first hit of the ball game. What a response after that Houdini-esque tightrope job in the bottom of the third. Wallendas would be the more appropriate metaphor there. But regardless, leadoff double for Ian Bourne. First hit of the ball game for either side. Puts a runner in scoring position for Somerville. And Tucker Callie, who had a phenomenal defensive play earlier in this game, with a chance to bring on the first run. And he'll check his swing, but it is strike one. So the first hit of the game belongs to Ian Bourne with a ringing double to right field. lead off this top of the fourth. Runner going for third. This is skied into center field. Bourne will have to get back. Oh, it drops. It drops in front of the left fielder for a base hit. And Bourne will get to third in the end. So runners at the corners now to begin the inning for Somerville. In no man's land there between short, center, and left. Born at third, Cali at first, and now Preston Artolino with the go-ahead run, the first run of the ball game, 90 feet away. Oh, they tried to pick him off at first. Oh, they'll come home with it. He is safe. The way these first three innings have played out, you had to figure the first run of the game was going to score in some fashion akin to that. Man, I don't know how you got to score that one. Because you got, I mean, for starters, this is strike one called to Artelino. For starters, you have the, I assume that's going to be an error. You have a, you would call an error on right there, throwing to first. And that enabled Bourne to make a break for it. I don't think you can call an error because you can't assume an out there. So I don't think you can call an error on the first. Yeah, that's got to be an E1. I think it's just the result of the play. No steals, just an E1. 
how it's going to end up playing out. So no stolen base and just an E1. That's one and one with Cali now at second. And now it's two and one. I mean, the second error of the game on Medford. First one allowed Larkin to reach, but obviously he was stranded at third way back in the first. But now Somerville with the lead runner going for third. Here's the throw down to third, and it is not in time. It was to the foul side of the third base bag, a stolen base for Cali. It's three and one, last pitch was a ball to Artelino. Infield comes in. And that'll be fouled over towards the Somerville dugout. And the count will be full. Still nobody out in the inning. one nothing our score. First run of the game. Scoring on an error on John Wright. Just trying to pick off the runner at first, Cali. Bourne came in the back door. Cali got to second on the play. Cali then stole third in there. And there he is, 90 feet away. And a full count to the cleanup man, the shortstop, Preston Artelino. Infield in here. one nothing our score after both pitchers had allowed no hits and struck out six through three innings. Born leading off this inning with a double. After he walked three, committed an error of his own and a balk in the bottom of the third on the mound, but didn't allow any runs. Now he scores the go-ahead run after the leadoff double this inning. And that'll be high for ball four. What, or not. Uh, I guess the scoreboard was wrong then because I had, I had three and two the whole way. That should have been ball four if that was the case, but I guess something got... Lost in translation, and this will be skied into center field, and that will be caught in center for out number one. Tagging from third is Cali, and he will score to make it 2-0, Somerville. I don't know which you'd rather in that case if you are, uh, if you are Medford. You want first and third, but still a 1-0 game, or? They trade the run for the out. Now, it's 2 0. Base is empty. One out. And here is Colin Bourne, who skies this one into shallow right. And that'll be caught by the second baseman, Geogus. And quickly, two away. So Bourne not wasting any time after the sack fly by Artelino, but he pops up to second. And here is Max Barish, the left fielder, lined out to first. Fine play over there by Pucci uh, back in the second inning. And that will be ball one. So 2 nothing our score. Somerville with two runs on two hits and one error. So far in this inning, only one RBI, and that will be on the sack fly by Artelino driving in Cali. That'll be shot to second, and a 4-3 ground out is how this top of the fourth comes to an end, but not before again. The Highlanders score two runs on two hits, one error, and leave the bases empty. Halfway home, 2-0, Somerville on top of Meffa. Yeah, 
The LSP store is open. Get yourself a DVD or digital copy of most past LSP video broadcasts or one of several different designs of stickers, shirts, or other merch, including some stuff of my dog, Tina the Long Arena, on it, and some words I've probably said over the years on this here YouTube channel. LSP37.creator-spring.com for merch. Email yours truly, samfeelypvp at gmail.com for game videos. <laughs> Now at bat, number 10, Justin Marino. Justin Marino lead things off for Medford here in the bottom of the fourth to be followed by Rocco Pucci and Travers Moody. So three walks, but no runs so far for Medford and also no hits on the ball game. Those three walks in the bottom of the third were the first three base runners of the game, in fact, for Medford. Outside for ball one to Marino, who struck out swinging on three pitches to begin the top, uh, excuse me, the bottom of the second, his first time up. Only hits in this ball game by Somerville in the top half of this frame. As that'll be upstairs for ball two, two and O oh to Marino. It's gonna be followed by Rocco Pucci and Travers Moody. Both pitchers with six strikeouts through the first three innings. Rocky top of the fourth to say the least for John Wright. Double and single by Bourne and Cali, then an error, a steal, and a sack fly lead to the first two runs of the ball game. And the Highlanders have the lead as we're halfway home. We're going to be closing the Who You Got poll after this half, half inning, so your rep in Medford or Somerville in the chat, get your votes in to let us know who you think is going to win. Two and two. Somerville going to hang on, or are the Mustangs going to make the comeback? Two and two to Marino. Bourne comes set. Pitch. Little chopper right back to Bourne. Dropped it out of the snow cone. Throws on to first anyways to his brother for the out. There's the first baseman, Rocco Pucci. Ground out to short his first time up. And remember, nothing has left the infield yet for the Mustangs. It's all been strikeouts and ground outs to this point. Upstairs, ball one to Pucci. You can hear the Simpsons references flowing in right now. One and one. Medford eliminated from eliminated from uh, the uh, first round of the state tournament last year by Marblehead. Uh, excuse me, Somerville eliminated by Mar Marblehead. Medford did not qualify. Hey, Jess Burton, how you doing? Fouled off. Count will be one and two. I was going on to uh, Twin Fells there, but uh, stopped by the uh, overhang here, it looks like. Why I would have expected to get it all the way there with that trajectory. It looked higher from this angle, but whatever. 1 2. Bourne comes set. The pitch. Chopped to second. Handled there and on to first. Two up, two down here in the bottom of the fourth. Travers Moody struck out swinging his first time up to 
end the second inning. So he had that challenging bottom of the third on the mound for Bourne, but he got through it unscathed in the end. Seemed to be revitalized by that tap of the fourth, helping his own cause. The leadoff double eventually scoring the first run of the ball game, and now here he is, two up, two down in the bottom of the fourth with Moody. As that just missed inside for ball one. Just past the hour mark of this ball game. We're in the bottom of the fourth, two nothing. Somerville on top of Medford from Morelli Field in Melrose. Two and zero. Sam Feely here with you in this uh, matchup of long time Greater Boston League rivals. Somerville two and zero on the season. Medford, as I put it earlier, o o and to be determined. In their first game of the season against Revere, suspended in the eighth inning, tied at three. That'll have to be resolved uh, the next time. The Mustangs face the Patriots. 3-0 to Moody. Durazio, the catcher, is on deck. Now a four-pitch walk drawn by Trevor's Moody. So the fourth walk of the game issued by Bourne. So Durazio, runner on first and two down here in the bottom of the fourth, swings and misses for strike one. Third baseman Callie way off the bag and in on the lip of the grass and the shortstop playing much closer to the second base bag than normal here. Don't have a scouting report on Durazio. I'm not sure how much of a pull hitter he is, but feels like they are expecting him to pull here. Now we will foul that one off. It'll be 0-2. Poor Jack Lombardo got ranched by Cali to end the bottom of the first, though. Now it's some phenomenal defensive work out of the hot corner earlier in this game. Now, if he's giving you that much room down the line, you might want to try and take advantage of it. Unfortunately, that's two fouls in that direction. And it remains 0-2. Moody at first after the two-out walk, the fourth walk issued by Bourne. 0-2 oh once again. Fouled off. If you're the Mustangs, you might be thinking that your path to a victory in this game lies in getting Bourne out of the game. So after the taxing bottom of the third, to Ratchet up his pitch count in this half inning here, even if you don't score. Taking a ball up and in will help too. And so along the foul balls that Durazio's been able to spoil here. One and two now to the Mustangs catcher. Second baseman Yogis do up next for Razio Azarello's squad. Is that that's a ball. Wow, okay. It's a pass ball, too, as Moody goes up to second. Snow coned in, uh, in Ross's glove, and I think it was expecting strike three there, which is why he didn't move. And then hmm, it's three and two, really? Are you sure? I didn't have, oh, man. I, I clearly missed something there because it's three and two. I only had two and two, but there's ball four. And the dropped ball to, well, Moody going to third on another 
pass ball on Ross. A little nonchalant there in that plate appearance behind the plate, Ross. Interesting. Um, oh, Donald. Oh, well, actually. <laughs> well, actually, this is this is the thing, though. I only had two and two before the, uh, uh, going into that last pitch. The umpire had it at three and two, so if it was three and two, that would be ball four. And yes, Durazio could take his base, but oh, Matt O'Donnell asking for some help here because he only had it at two and two like I did, but the umpire had it at three and two, and yeah, so that is what's going to happen here. So it's going to be three and two. Moody can still go to third, though, on the pass ball. So it's going to be three, a full count with a runner at third. So Giogas not at bat yet. One more strike still to get, and it's ball four anyway. So Durazio does reach. And here's Giogas. So it'll be runners at the corners. Two down for Alex Giogas, who struck out looking his first time up in the third, and he is the only batter to go down looking against Bourne tonight. And Bourne is starting to slip a little bit here. When he started to slip last inning, a visit from O'Donnell did wonders, and he eventually got out of it. Do we need another visit here is the question. That's on the outside corner for strike one. Two pass balls in the same plate appearance, though. Getting Moody to third. Popped up, foul, and out of play, one and two. Don't forget, folks, if you want to drop a message in the chat, be, be advised that the uh, chat is subscribers only. They do that to keep out the spam bots and such, but uh, it's free. Uh, uh, it costs nothing to subscribe. You don't have to be subscribed for five minutes to let our PA announcer, Anthony, know he's doing a good job. Runner goes. This is skied foul and out of play again. So more subscribers and uh, more uh, more opportunity for uh, broadcast later in the year too. One and two of the count now. Still actually, runners at the corners. High for ball two. Well, the bottom of the third, I mentioned that could have been a tipping point in the game, and Bourne got out of it and then let off the next half inning with a double and came around to score the first run. He may be at another tipping point here. Two and two the count. Slap to the left side. Third baseman's got it on to first. And once again, Ian Bourne escapes a jam. Brands runners at the corners despite two more walks. And we're through four. It is still 2-0, Somerville. Oh. Get out of the time. Nope. Get out of two jams. I know. Are you down with the sound called LSP? Then follow and support us on the web. Linktree, Facebook, YouTube, PayPal, Creator Spring, LSP37. Uh, find out more about our services on Thumbtack. And you can buy Magic the Gathering cards on TCG Player. Our store there if you're into that sort of thing. Good inning. How's that happen? Okay, 
so it can. I know. You know, I think it's just that we pay with so much money. Forty million a year, maybe or thirty-five. <sighs> Same picture? That's cool, yeah. So. Now at bat, number 28, Graham Roth. Graham Ross to lead things off here in the top of the fifth as he takes strike one on the outside corner. Ross is 0 for 1 with a ground out. Bottom third of the order due up for Somerville here. Ross, Brown, and Tommy Griffin. Fouled off over towards Brown there in the on deck circle. And be 0 and 2. It was, in fact, Brown I was thinking of who had the, uh, who came, who was inches away from a leadoff double the opposite way. But uh, they ended up striking out. I couldn't re forgot if that was uh, thing of Colin Borner, Noel Brown that instance. But good morning, good afternoon, and good night. It's Graham Ross. It's John Wright is back out there and hoping to settle down after that uh, that rough top of the fourth, which he allowed the only two runs and only two hits of this game. But all those belonging to Somerville. Striking out Ross for his fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh K of the ball game. And now he's ahead of Brown here. Owen one who struck out swinging again uh, after coming inches shy of leadoff double the other way. His first time up will try to pull this one to third. And instead it'll be a routine 5-3 ground out. Simple play made there by Travers Moody. Two up, two down for Tommy Griffin, the second baseman. Griffin, 0 for 1 with a strikeout, two runs, two hits, one error, and one left for Somerville in this game. Meanwhile, for Medford, because that's outside for ball one, no runs, no hits, two errors, and five left. The base is loaded. That's outside for ball two. They have the bases loaded in the third and left runners on the corners in the fourth. Five walks in the last two innings drawn off of the starter, Ian Bourne, but nothing across the plate just yet. And now John Wright is behind the number nine hitter, Tommy Griffin, three and O. Oh. Leadoff man, Rob Larkin, due up next. Larkin reached to begin the ball game. That was nine in a row, retired by Wright. And it's a four-pitch walk to the number nine man. Wow, of all the times to cough up your first walk, John Wright coughs it up on four pitches to the number nine hitter and turns the lineup over. For Larkin again, Larkin uh, will try a submarine throw to first to pick him off, and it goes into foul territory. Griffin is on his way to second. That is the second E one of the ball game for John Wright. Larkin in the right field, and that will get down for a base hit. Around third is Griffin. He will score standing up. Throw it a second, not in time. RBI single for Rob Larkin. 3 0. Highlanders. The error put the runner in scoring position, and a, a base hit, a little blooper into right, brought him home. 
It's actually going to be another error on that play. It's going to be an E9. That allows Larkin to get to second. And here's Ian Bourne in there for strike one. There will be an RBI, though, regardless for Larkin. That wasn't a debate. And that will go to the backstop. And Larkin will go to third. Wild pitch crossed up the catcher there, Durazio. All right, the wheels coming off here for right is the question. Trying to see, I don't see anyone warming right now for the Mustangs. Of course, in high school baseball, it doesn't necessarily mean anything. Could just swap positions with someone else in the field. Deep to right. But coming in and making the catch is Lombardo. Looked good and sound good off the bat, but Lombardo able to put on the brakes and come back towards it for the out that retires the side in the top of the fifth. One more run on one more hit, two errors, and one left for Somerville after four and a half. 3 0 Highlanders. Advertising opportunities are available on LSP. Sponsor our content for as little as $25 a spot. Whether you want to promote a business product or event or send a message of support to a player, team, or coach. Or a public address announcer like Anthony. Or me. I don't know. Email yours truly, samfeelypbpgmail.com for all the deets. Yeah. Can I see the roster, please? Ah, uh, the summer roster. Pretty soon, that's it. Uh, no There's two different. There's two different hits. Two different yeah. runs. Ian isn't right. You see, is that 23 and right? Is that both Ian and 23 and right? Uh, yeah, that's no. 23 and right. Uh huh. Okay. Announced. Now pitching for Somerville, number 15, Noah Brown. Pretty game, wasn't it? Now pitching for Somerville, number 15, Noah Brown. And now in right field, number 23, Ian Bourne. Now in right field, number 23, Ian Bourne. Position swap here in the bottom of the fifth for Somerville as Ian Bourne and Noah Brown swap positions. And Brown's now on the mound and Bourne is now in right field. So that'll put an end to Ian Bourne's day. Four innings of scoreless, hitless ball. Did allow five walks, but struck out one, two, three, four, five, six batters. And also committed one balk. So that'll be Noah Brown to start the to start the bottom of the fifth on the mound. And he blows this one past Derek Marino for strike one. Derek is O is uh O for O. Had a walk his first time up. Got the second on a balk, but was stranded there. So Noah Brown with the 0-1, changing up from the lefty to the righty, and here's the pitch. It'll be skied straight into the overhang here, and it'll be 0-2. Marino, Piccolo, and Mangan do up in the bottom of the fifth here for Meffa, and if anybody gets on, Jack Lombardo. Way down away and all the way in the backstop for ball one. 
One and two to Derek. I forgot to close the poll like I said I would, but we'll do that now. And I know we got a lot of Medford supporters in the chat, but y'all need to be supporting a little louder from wherever you are because they are down to their final nine outs and need three runs to keep this one going. Two and two, though, here to the number nine hitter, Derek Marino. Oof, close, but it is ball three. Three and two, full count now to Marino. Six fans voting, all of them rooting for the Mustangs, but again, down big here with nine outs left to their credit. Skied into left field, a late break there for the shortstop, takes a tumble, and he got it! He made the catch! Preston Ardolino. The left fielder came in first bearish. Ardolino hesitated. He's the one who went head over heels, but the out is made anyways. That technically count as a ball out of the infield if it's caught by the shortstop. Swing and a miss for strike one to Piccolo. Piccolo's 0 for 2 with 2 Ks. I'm sure he's happy to see Bourne now in right field rather than on the mound, but his luck doesn't get much better. Able to put it in play this time, but... Uh, 1-3, ground out here. Come back her to the mound. Brown picks it off the hop, off that little ramp on the uh, pitcher's mound. And two up, two down for Brown's first inning of work here tonight. And here is Mangan. 0 for 1 with a ground out to first and a walk. Oh, that is a brutal curveball there that comes back to the inside corner for strike one. In the top of the sixth, Somerville will have, uh, it looks like Cali, Artelino, and Bourne do up. This is into right field. Here's Ian's first test out there, and he passes it easily for the out. That retires the side. So three up, three down, and... Noah Brown's first test on the mound tonight. We're through five, still 3 nothing. Somerville on top of Meffa. Still John out there? When I say LSP has something for everyone since 2011, I by God mean it. Sports, live events, pet sitting and walking, tech help, errands, and more. Check out all our services on Thumbtack, which you can find through our link tree profile, link tree slash LSP37, or you can email yours truly, samfeelypvp at gmail.com, so we can proceed to give you what you need. And then they scored five runs to tie it up. Hey, so a great swing. Top of the six, heart of the order, due up for Somerville here with Callie Artelino and Colin Bourne. And 
that nearly hit Cali for ball one. Through five innings, Somerville and Medford have sent the same number of batters to the plate. They have each sent 20 batters. This is down the left field line towards the corner, and it is waiting for the signal for the umpire. <laughs> I guess it's a foul ball. All right. Neither umpire was quite convinced of uh, not a lot of conviction there, and and it's just a very long strike one. <laughs> but again, uh, through five innings, both teams have sent 20 batters to the plate. Only difference is Somerville has plated three runs on three hits. And nothing on, no runs on no hits yet for Medford. And here's a leadoff single for Tucker Cali to give him a two for three night. The third time now in six innings that Somerville has gotten the leadoff man aboard. Rob Larkin led off the ball game, in fact, reaching on an E4. Stranded at third. And Bourne with the double to lead off the top of the fourth. As that's down away for ball one. And now here is Callie with the leadoff single. John Wright is still out there on the mound, remember, for Medford. And a swing and a miss, but the pitch bounces away from DeRazio, and it'll be a wild pitch, allowing Callie to get to second. So one and one, but now a runner once again in scoring position for Somerville. The Mustangs have left five runners tonight leaving the bases loaded in the third and leaving runners on the corners in the fourth. Somerville has stranded two runners tonight, both at third. That was Larkin after he reached to begin the ball game in the top of the first. And Larkin again, in fact, after he got to third, singling home a run, then getting the second on an error on that play and then getting the third on a wild pitch. So Larkin is the only runner who's been stranded tonight for Somerville at third both times. Not a great spot to be left when you're the leadoff guy, but he did get an RBI out of it, as is a sky foul over towards the Somerville dugout and out of play. And the count will be even at two. Oh, by the way, it's Preston Artolino at the plate. He is 0 for 1 with a strikeout looking and a sack fly. Nearly came in and got him, but it is ball 3, 3, and 2. Runner goes for third, swing and a miss for a strike three, but not nearly in time to stop Cali from stealing third for the second time tonight. So Ardolino down on strikes for the second time. He's 0 for 2. And here is Colin Bourne. 0 for 2 with a strikeout looking to pop up to second. Infield comes in, and that is at the top of the zone for strike one, 0 and 1. Three runs on four hits, two left for Somerville. No runs on no hits and five left for Medford. DeRazio able to coax strike two out of the home plate umpire there with a pretty good frame. 
Owen two on Born. Medford is committed. One, two, three, four errors by my count. As down on strikes goes Born. Meanwhile, one for one error, but also two pass balls for uh, Somerville. One is fouled off for strike one to the left fielder Max Barish, who's 0 for 2 in the line out to first and a ground out to second. In the bottom of the sixth, the Mustangs will have Lombardo, Marino, and Pucci do up. Part of their order. And again, through five innings, both teams have sent 20 batters to the plate, but the game could not play out any more differently in every other regard. 3 nothing our score after five and a half on that routine three unassisted ground out. And for the third time, Somerville strands a runner at third. The LSP store is open. Get yourself a DVD copy or a digital copy of most past LSP video broadcasts. Or one of several different designs of stickers, shirts, or other merch, including some stuff with my dog, Tina the Long Arena, on it, or some words I've probably said over the years on this here YouTube channel, also on these things consume. LSP37 decorator-spring.com for merchandise or email yours truly, Samfeely PBP gmail.com for game videos. Now at bat, number six, Jack Lombardo. Well, if the Mustangs are going to make a comeback, got six outs to do it. So we go in uh, one, two, three in the top of the fifth against the new noodle. Didn't help. And that same noodle, Noah Brown, is back on the mound to start at the bottom of the sixth. And he misses for ball one to Lombardo, who is 0 for 2 with a ground out to third and a strikeout. So hitless and scoreless so far are the Mustangs. They, have, they drew five walks in the span of two innings from Ian Bourne, but could not make him pay. It's 2-0 to Lombardo. Got the base is loaded in the third. Left runners on the corners of the fourth. 3-0 to Noah Brown. Four innings, allowing no hits and no runs with five walks and six strikeouts plus one balk for Ian Bourne. Second inning of work now for Noah Brown. Got through the first one, two, three, but no K's to his name. And he gets strike one in there. Three and one now to Lombardo. Both pitchers had struck out six and not allowed a hit through the first three innings, but it was the fourth inning where Somerville finally broke through. Outside corner, strike two. Ian Bourne, after, lo after a laborious bottom of the third, allowing three walks, plus the balk, plus committing an error, but 
not allowing any runs. Led off that top of the fourth with a double and eventually came around to score the game's first run, which currently holds up as the difference after he was driven in on a single by Tucker Cali. Cali actually came around to score on a sack fly by Preston Ardolino, and actually I misspoke that uh, Bourne scored on an error, but uh, Cali had a single anyways. This is down the third base line and foul. And uh, I mean, obviously there's the no, there's the uh, unwritten rule of not bunting to break up a no-no, and obviously we, we wouldn't bunt with two strikes anyways, but uh, swing and bunt ain't against the unwritten rules, are they? <laughs> yeah, uh, Cali with a, a born leadoff double, and Cali with a single, an error by the pitcher. It was actually an error by the pitcher right, trying to pick off Cali with runners at the corners. Allowed Bourne to uh, to score in the, uh, to come in the back door to score the game's first run. And Cali scored in the sack fly by Ardolino, and Griffin scored another run in the fifth on an RBI single by Rob Larkin. Three nothing, Somerville. A little number down the third base line again, and that is again foul. And the precipitation that was tapered off earlier is back here at Morelli Field in Melrose. Actually, uh, I have a defensive. Uh, Ian Bourne's actually at first base now. I need to now. I need to figure out, uh, figure out where Colin is. Is he still in the game? Is the question. It's been some, probably been some other changes that I haven't been made aware of yet. I have to text Roz, but he's probably a little more engaged in this right one right now. This game is far from over. This is skied into center field, but it will stay in the park. And what a reach and what a catch by the center fielder. Rob Larkin, Robin, Jack Lombardo. <laughs> Twisting and turning all the way to try and haul that one in, and he did. One up, one down here in the bottom of the sixth. Here's Marino. 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a ground out to the pitcher. That was that pitcher was Ian Bourne. That goes the backstop for ball one. Ian Bourne now at first. See if that's Colin. Trying to see if that is Colin in right now, but it is? Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll trust you on this one, but 2 0. Is it 3? Yeah, it always 3 0. Excuse me, missed the ball. Anyways, 3-0 to Marino, and taking all the way for strike one. Now we'll go to work. I knew I brought these for a reason. Swing and a miss. Strike two. I don't think that is... Collins 22, number 22. I don't think that's 22 and right. Yeah, if only he could turn around. Don't want to be turned. Hmm? Here, at 22 and right, use these. <laughs> Down away for ball four. Well, while Anthony, well, Anthony, you got to call the next batter. But uh, you know, it is, in fact, Rocco Pucci coming up. But that is. Is it? Uh, so Rocco, after the we got uh, this now the sixth walk drawn by. That's that is that is not that is uh, not just the roster. Well, let me get the roster. 
Ball one out of Rocco. Um, might be. Is that Glassman? No. Just trying to negotiate all this back there. Now Preston's still short. Oh, it's Noah. Noah went. Wait, is it? Hang on. Wait, no. No, what am I talking about? Sorry, folks. Again, doing much of this by my lonesome. Half tempted to do sounds of the game for you. None of my blather while I figure all this out. Because Noah is on is on the mound. Was it? Is that is that Griffin? Thirteen. It is thirteen. Oh wait. Well, thirteen's at second now. Tommy's. Uh. <laughs> Grounder to short. Hit too slowly to get two. On to first. Got him. 6 3. The out at first. Puts a runner in scoring position, Marino. Pucci is retired, and here's Moody. Yeah. Because it looks like. No, hand me the other roster, would you? Strike one to Travers Moody is over one with a strikeout and a walk. I think it's, it's Daniel. I think it's Daniel Griffin in right. Oh, it's Daniel Griffin at second. Little inside out swing off the handle, the back grounded to first, and Ian Bourne will take it there. And after six complete, still no hits or runs on the scoreboard for Medford. Thought present short though, but anyways, while we try again to figure this out, this small our little game of Keystone Cops here. It's three nothing Somerville after six. <laughs> Now at bat, number 28, Graham Roth. Are you down with the sound called LSP? Then follow and support us on the web. Link to Facebook, YouTube, PayPal, Creator Spring, LSP37. Don't forget to subscribe. Thumbtack at DCG Player. Right That's right, Link do. <laughs> Top of the seventh, 3 nothing Somerville. And still no hits yet for Medford. Somerville trying to extend their lead. John Wright still out there to face Graham Ross. <laughs> well, despite being no hit, it sounds like the uh, Medford bench uh, pretty well engrossed in this one. That's good to know. Ross Brown and Tommy Griffin, it's Tommy Griffin's spot due up here in the top of the seventh. Swing and a miss. One and two now 
to Ross, who is 0 for 2 with a ground out to first and a strikeout swinging. Is, in fact, Noah Brown due up next in the on-deck circle. He's got to check from Tommy Griffin's slot, assuming it is still him. Or if it um, might have been a sub of all that defensive shuffling we've seen this game. Two and two of the counters. That just missed outside to Ross. But uh, four innings uh, for Noah, Br uh, Ian Bourne, and two so far for Noah Brown. That is on the outside corner for strike three called to Graham Ross. One up, one down here in the top of the seventh. And that is, in fact, Tommy in the on-deck circle. So here is Noah. Now pitching. And that nearly hit him. <laughs> and it is ball one to Noah, who is 0 for 2, with a strikeout and a ground to third. There have been four, uh, only four hits in this game. They've all been by the top three hitters in the Somerville lineup. No hits yet for the Mustangs. And one and one is the count now to Noah Brown. Rob Larkin is one for three with a single. Ian Bourne. One for three with a double. Put an error on the scoreboard there on Coach O'Donnell. And two singles for Tucker Cowley. Griffin's the only other member of the Somerville lineup who's reached base tonight. Walk back in the fifth. Up and in for ball two. Plethora of walks drawn by the Medford lineup tonight. Six in all, but no hits and no runs. They've left six runners, um, four of them in scoring position. There's a full count now to Noah Brown. Smacked into left field for a base hit. The production you get out of the bottom of your lineup can go a long way in determining the outcome of close games. Somerville up 3-0 here and no hitting Medford in the process, but can't take it for granted. I just heard that the Red Sox are now trailing the Orioles 7-5 after being up 5-0 early. Jackson Holiday effect? I don't know. He's playing second tonight. Tommy Griffin, 0 for 1 with a walk. He's going to try and lay one down, so he pops it up into the overhang for strike one. Try and lay one down again, but it said strike two. And before the first pitch of this at bat, when Wright went over to uh, when Wright went over to uh, first to try and pick out the runner, was having deja vu there with uh, two errors committed from that direction earlier in this game. Well, excuse me, swing over towards Rob Larkin in the on deck circle, and it remains 0 and 2. That is, in fact, still John Wright out there on the mound. Allowed just th allowed three runs, but again, on just five hits and one walk to this point while striking out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Grounder to short. Could be two, maybe hit a little too slowly to second for one. That is all they will get. The force of Brown goes 6-4. Griffin reaches on the fielder's choice, and the lineup turns over for Rob Larkin. Reach on an error at second to start uh, to start the game, and stole second, but was stranded at third. And that was nine in a row retired by Wright before Somerville finally got on the scoreboard with a crooked number in the top of the fourth. Two runs on two hits, and one error and one sack fly, and a stolen base in that top of the fourth, and an insurance run 
with Larkin plating Griffin in the fifth, and this will be a fly out to left for the out that retires the side. A great effort tonight by John Wright, but can his offense respond? They are three outs away from getting no hit. Stay tuned. Can Medford keep this one going? Oh, oh my god. That's right. Fifteen, so brown. It was in fact ten, I knew it. So it's ten, so Griffin's in right. And second base is thirteen in the roster. Daniel Griffin. And it's... 27 out there. Yeah. 23 at first still? 23 is still at first, and then you got 16 shorts back. So it's still pressed or short. And then who's on the left? 24. 24. And, and center is... 4. All right, so... It's just 13 at second. That's the way change? No, don't worry about it. So Thomas and so Thomas and Dan Oh, Griffin's still out there. So Collins out, right? 22's out of the game. Colin Bourne is no longer in the game. Okay, so. Yeah. Oh, okay. So Bourne is out. Okay. Okay. So now that bat, number one, Joe DeRazio. All right, so we got the defensive shuffle uh, over the last couple of things sorted out here for Somerville. So right now, left to right in the outfield is Barish Larkin. And, oh, we'll get to that. Here's a chopper to third under a couple of infielders. Is that how it's going to be put to, is that how the no-hitter is going to come to an end? Well, we got. <laughs> well, Durazio reaches. How much we know? A swing and a miss. David Crohan, pinch hitting. For Alex Geogis, I think that's a base hit. That's got it. That's a base hit. When uh, I don't think either the third baseman or the shortstop touches. That is, I mean, brutal way for a no-no to come to an end. First pitch, a little nubber that just barely gets past two infielders. But Joe DeRazio, uh, Joe DeRazio with the first hit of the ball game for Medford comes with one out in the bottom of the seventh. And now David Crohan pinch hitting for Geogis. And he's ahead two and one. And that's Derek Marino due up after him. Nubber off the plate, and in fact, off of Crohan, it'll be two and two. Mm -hmm. Austin Price in the on deck circle right now. And it could be called back depending on the outcome of this at bat, but we'll see. 
There's the pitch is fouled off. So anyways, left to right in the outfield now is Barish, Larkin, and Colin Bourne. Uh, Barish, Larkin, and Tommy Griffin. Third to first in the infield is now Callie Artolino, Daniel Griffin, and Ian Bourne. And it's still Ross behind the plate, catching Noah Brown. It was born for the first four innings, and it's been Brown since. It's Bourne's game to win. Brown in line for the save. He can hold this lead. Two strikes on Crohan with Durazio at first. Outside, gets away from the catcher. Ross, and that'll be a wild pitch that puts Durazio at second. It did bounce off of Ross's glove, but it was way outside to begin with. So, I I had two and two already. Scoreboard in the in here, Morelli now says two and two. As his ground to the right side, will get the runner to third, nearly ate up the second baseman, but he makes the play. One down to third goes Durazio. And as promised, Austin Price to pinch hit now for Derek Marino. The tying run is still in the on-deck circle, so Austin wants needs to get on base here. With one out, Runner at third trying to induce a balk, maybe, and that'll be ball one. Bounce away from Ross for a bit, but able to handle it and prevent the advance by Durazio. Here the pitcher in this situation, Brown. Just act like he doesn't exist. Act like the guy on third doesn't exist. His run means nothing. Don't let him. Don't let him distract you into committing a balk. Just get your batter. If he grounds out, or if he hits a sack, if he grounds out and the run scores, or he hits a sack fly, so what? It's a run, but now they have one out left. There's a strike to make it two and one. It's harder to do though when you're a righty in this situation because the runner on third is straight in your line of vision essentially. Now the comfort to have your back turned to him. A little number off the handle, the bat again, bounce it short, will score the run. And they'll get the out, 6-3. Run comes in, Durazio, RBI, G6 for Price. And the Mustangs have gotten their first hit, and they have gotten their first run, but they are now down to their final out. And it's the leadoff man, Mike Piccolo. 0 for 3 with two strikeouts and a comebacker to the mound. Flares this one down the right field line. Backing up as a right fielder. He makes the catch. Tommy Griffin hauls it in for the final out of the ball game. And in a game that took two hours and five minutes, the winning pitcher is Ian Bourne. The losing pitcher is John Wright. And the save goes to Noah Brown. Final totals for Somerville, three runs on one, two, three, four, five hits, one error, and three men, uh, four men left, rather, and for Medford, one run, one hit, one, two, three, four, four errors, and Six left. Didn't get their first hit, 
until Durazio's single underneath the third baseman and the shortstop to lead off this bottom of the seventh. But Medford is now 0-1, and, and Somerville is now 3-0. and Fantastic game all around, and it was, in fact, those two runs in the top of the fourth with Brown and Callie reaching on the first two hits of the ball game by either side, back-to-back, -back, and eventually scoring. That proved to be the difference. So with that said, this has been a presentation of LSP, something for everyone for over a decade. Copyright 2024, unauthorized redistribution of any portion of this broadcast without the express written permission of LSP is strictly prohibited. A reminder that you can advertise on future LSP content for as little as $25 a spot. You can email yours truly, Sam Feely, pbp at gmail.com for more information on that. You can also email me or visit our Thumbtack and Linktree pages to get all the details on our live events, sports, pet sitting, walking, tech help, and other services Whatever you, you may need, we might have something for you. We've got something for everyone since 2011. You can buy a DVD or digital copy of this or most past LP video broadcasts uh, through our store. Merch is on Creator Spring. The videos are you can get by emailing me. And don't forget, if you down the sound called LSP, follow us on the web. It's the right thing to do. Linktree, Facebook, YouTube, PayPal, Creator Spring, LSP37. Again, Thumbtack and TCG Player as well. Once again, the final score from Morelli Field in Melrose, Mass. It is the Somerville Highlanders 3 and the Medford Mustangs 1. For all my rowdy friends here at Morelli, my name is Sam Feely, reminding you forever and always, freelance isn't free. Thanks for tuning in. Fresh for 2024. Suckas. Love you, Katrina. Party hard, Caitlin.